Hi, welcome to Talking Books and Stuff, the program that talks all about books and writing and stuff. Here's your host, Dennis Rimmer. And hello once again. This is Talking Books and Writing and Stuff. I'm Dennis Rimmer with us today. Talking about books and writing and stuff and TV shows and movies and things like that is Maureen Jennings. Maureen from based now in Toronto. So uh, I guess a belated Happy New Year to you. Thank you. (laughs) You too. And you were born in England, I understand. And grew, grew up there, I guess. And then you are now in Toronto, so maybe you can tell us, Maureen Jennings, how you got from there to here. Uh, I came with my mother. Um, She had an older sister who lived in Windsor, Ontario, and this was post-war, of course, and the country was very dreary, I think. My mom was a widow. Uh, my father was killed in the war, and I think she, I know she wanted a happier life than she felt she was having. And uh, my auntie kept saying, "Come here, come here, it's wonderful." So we did. So we packed up everything, she sold the house, got on a boat, got seasick, got unseasick, <laughs> uh, and then arrived in uh, eventually in Windsor, Ontario where I think we stayed. I stayed there for about two years and then came up to Toronto, and that was it. That was it. But for staying in, for being fixed, I mean, fixed in a fixed spot. And what part of England were you first? uh... From the Midlands, uh, the, the big, dirty city of Birmingham. Birmingham, okay. So Birmingham, you have to say yeah. Birmingham. Birmingham, is that tight, um, it, which, your nose. which city do they have Coronation Street in? I think that's down in London, as far as I know. Or it's must be the city. No, it's in the East End down there. I don't know actually. Because <laughs> I always thought it was like Manchester or Birmingham where they set. Oh, you know, no, definitely not Birmingham, but it might be Manchester. Because they always think things, right about that. they say things like, I know nought about that and stuff like that. <laughs> things I've never right. heard of. My grandparents on my father's side came from Southport. Oh, okay. So, well, that's a nicer place to come from than Birmingham, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and that was... Uh, well, 1911, I think they came here from, from oh, there. Oh, okay. So I'm only right. a second second generation Canadian myself. So, right. Yeah, all these years later, I guess that's more than a hundred years ago. So when you're yeah, growing up, true. what was your? Did you have a? Did you read a lot? I guess as a child. Constantly, the uh, the expression there. I haven't heard it much over lately but it was a bookworm you know the idea being that like i just read everything that i could get really and uh, we didn't have many we didn't have any books in the house to be truthful but we used the library it was it, it was a, a way of life working class so i was always grateful to the library and uh, the thing about the library was, of course, that books were rationed. I mean, you were only allowed to take out, I think, three books at a time because it was in such demand. I think I don't think that's true now. But anyway, it was then. So I go and get my three books and return them the next day and get another three books, <laughs> something like that. I love. Li- I still love libraries. So. Did you have like a favorite author at the time, or did you just read anything and everything? Or, well, again, different from now. Um, at that time, the librarians were very strict about adult literature versus children's literature, and you you could not take one, from one section if you were a child. You could not go into the adult section. And I don't think that was such a bad thing. It was just a way of making sure that you didn't accidentally 
run into D.H. Lawrence or something, <laughs> right. which I did later. Right. <laughs> <laughs> totally scarred my young romantic soul. <laughs> anyway, but uh, the crossover, I think, yeah, I, rem- I absolutely remember being underage. It must have been 14 cut off. And begging the librarian, I was like three weeks away from my birthday. And she wouldn't let me. She wouldn't let me go into the adult section. until. And then it was such a big deal. And it was thrilling to be allowed to cross over. And then that's where I discovered Sherlock Holmes. I might have been in the younger section, but I think was definitely in the adult section. And that's where I found Sherlock Holmes. And that was that was love at first read and went on and on and on forever to this day. And would that uh, mean that um, Conan Doyle was your favorite author at the time, or did you have other favorites? Um, definitely Conan Doyle. Um, I don't. I don't know. Actually, I, I, again, I read so much. I, as I got older, I well, when I I started to read the, uh, still keeping in the genre. Uh, Dorothy Sayers, Dale Marsh, all those British classic books and writers, which I still, I'm not, I haven't gone back and read them. I don't want to spoil that memory that they were fabulous. Because you know how it is. Sometimes you go back and you say, oops. Yep. It's... <laughs> that, that was from a different era and I was younger and... <laughs> No, thank you. Yeah, it's not the same sometimes. Even if I, I see no. a movie from the 70s that I really like then, and then I watch it now and go, what was I thinking? <laughs> I know. I, it's No, I'd rather they stay all shiny and happy, you know, uh, that I really like them, which I did, of course. So, But I, did, I must say, I did reread, not that long ago, Little Women, and I thought it really stood up. I thought it was it's a really good book. Jane Eyre Stands Up, which was my absolute favorite book ever. That's mostly stands up. And of course Black Beauty stands up, so but some of them don't. I, I, I did have a little peek at Dorothy Sayers not that long ago, about three years ago, and I thought, Oops, just <laughs> leave it as a happy memory. <laughs> so it's a whole other talk. Anyway, sorry, I think I got off track. Oh, that's no, okay. No. <laughs> that's that's yeah. the way we do things here. Um, <laughs> oh, good. Maureen Jennings is with us. Uh, we'll get to her uh, television stuff in a moment. But you were speaking of libraries, and I discovered a season of darkness a novel by maureen jennings came out in 2011 at least the copy i have and the library and yeah she tipped me off to it the one here in radisson she said because i talked to her about the podcast we do and she's a good friend and she said oh you have to read this one she's the person who came up with the murdoch mysteries and so i opened it up your book season of darkness and like i said earlier in our emails I got hooked right away. Now I'm, you know, getting into it. I haven't had a chance to read much in the last couple of days because of vacations and everybody has colds this time of year and stuff like that. But uh, I'm wandering a bit here. Um, what I'm impressed with, Maureen, is the attention to detail and your characteristics, the characterizations you have, like immediately within a sentence, I know this person. How do you oh, writers you. do this stuff? How do you guys do that? <laughs> I don't get it because I can't write a shopping list. I write nonfiction, but I don't write fiction because I, uh, okay. I can't make up stuff like that. How, how do you keep them all straight? Tell me your secret. <laughs> well, I I must say it, I do steal a lot from real people. Now, I mix them up because I know a very dear friend of mine said to me, quietly said i'm murdoch aren't i <laughs> he actually wasn't but there were some characteristics that he recognized of himself and so it, it i think everybody i know does that you you just have a little bit of that person and a little bit of that and they, then they then they take a step forward in one's unconscious and they they're alive so once after that they do their own thing you know just like oh, all right okay fine but thank you I'm, I'm glad that you like that that's very important 
for any writer to make it believable, the world believable, the, that you're creating, the people believable. That's really, really important. Well, it's the first so, few and, pages. And yeah. I was just going to say, I know that I look for that if I am reading somebody else's book, uh, nonfiction, uh, I mean fiction, sorry, yep. that uh, that's what grabs me. Is, wow, yeah, I believe that. It doesn't matter if it's on Mars or something. Say, yeah, I believe that. <laughs> um, yeah, because I'm saying like in the first few pages of Season of Darkness, I learned about, uh, well, I won't give away the plot, but a, a <laughs> pistol was found that turned out to be a, a German Luger. Uh, there's a farm girls, uh, the f farm girl army, yeah. something like that, and yeah. bicycles that they were issued by the government. There was like certain bicycles you could have, certain <laughs> things you could do, and the, all of this stuff in the first few pages. And I went, where does all this come from? How does she know all this stuff? <laughs> Oh, that's the fun part, honestly. Doing the research is such fun because you, you don't have to produce anything. Just, oh, wow, oh, that was interesting. Oh, my goodness. you know. And then at some point it's like, okay, am I going to turn this into a novel now? And so I, I, like, I, I like that kind of thing. I really do. It's fun. It's really fun. My books are just keep piling up at, at the moment. Anyway, yeah, so that's, that's how one does it, I think. <laughs> If, if there is a secret, that's the secret. Yeah, yeah. right. So, uh, uh, books, Maureen Jennings, books. Tell us about your books. How many do you have out there? Fourteen now. Fourteen. And Fourteen, There's yeah. Now, Murdoch, plays, it's William plays. Murdoch and Tom Tyler are two main characters, yeah. right? Uh, they have been. I now have a new... Two new. I have a female uh, character who has had two books, and now I'm just writing book two of another female protagonist uh, set in 1936. Um, and in that case, I deliberately try to invoke William Murdoch's world. So in this latest series, his son, Jack, enters in as a detective. He's not major front, but he's there. So I, I like doing that. I thought that was fun. So what was your very first published book then? Except the Dying. That, that was William Murdoch, detective. And that was set in Toronto, 1895. Now, on the TV series Murdoch Mysteries, uh, set in Toronto, turn of the century, century, meaning 1800s to 1900s, and so the period uniforms and things are accurate with the bobby type hats and the whistles and in the police situation? Absolutely. Um, I feel very lucky that the team, the team's changed a little bit, but not significantly. Unfortunately, and fortunately, everybody is really interested in getting the details right. They very rarely make a mistake. And I'm very happy about that. So again, you, you get that feeling of believability. Because as it was clear that the show was taking off, uh, we, we had to move the time period. So it starts off in 1895. I think we might, might have two seasons and then somebody said wait a minute we've got an advanced time period because we're going to get very limited if we don't so now we're up to 13 seasons and the time frame in the show is 1907 so that gives us a chance to bring in more historical things at that time so who knows we might be Continuing to World War One, this Who knows? <laughs> at the moment. Oh my God! And very much so back in those days, 1900, 1905, 1907, the Murdoch era was England. I mean, Toronto actually very much an outpost of England, pretty much. It really was absolutely right, right up until World War One. Actually, the whole feeling of the country 
capture for Quebec was very Anglo. And a lot of people, as you were saying about your grandparents, had immigrated from England so that their loyalty, their sense of belonging definitely was back there, really, even though they were committed to being here. It was still, there was a lot of looking over the pond to life in England, especially in World War One. And then there was the way back even earlier, the United Empire loyalists, as it were, came yeah. up from the U.S. to escape the revolution, or they didn't want to have any part of it. So, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, v- very strong ties like that. Well, Which I, I was, when I first started to read and research, I, that, was, that was fine with me, because I thought I understood it better. I understood that it, the attitudes particularly were attitudes I was very familiar with from growing up in England. So that was, I thought that was easier to capture than if it was something I'd never experienced. Maureen Jennings is with us. Uh, 14 books uh, out there. You can go look for them. Uh, were they all published by McClellan and Stewart? Two were published. The two books that I wrote with a female protagonist were published by Dun Dun Press, and now I have a publisher, Cormorant Press, who are doing this other female protagonist, oh. whose name is Charlotte Frame. Is so I gonna, guess I have three publishers, yeah. Is there going to be a TV version of uh, Tom Tyler or a Charlotte? or? <laughs> I hope so. We, it's it's all terribly up in the air, but at the moment there's been a big interest in the Tom Tyler series from a Canadian producer and a Canadian English producer together, and then the uh, the other series with the female. Again, that's been resurrected and. There's an interest in her and setting that, which because I said it in Scotland, the first book, and that apparently this Scottish person, and that's the word you, you use in, in the business, it's interested. <laughs> that doesn't commit you to anything, but it does give a little bit of hope, like, okay, we're interested in this book, okay, fine. Okay, yeah. I had to open the door and let the cat in. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oops, and that's me hitting something. Um, <laughs> have you you've written screenplays or television scripts? I assume. Yes, I have. I actually have three theater plays. One, another one coming up, and then I think I've got because Murdoch kept going on. Uh, I got a chance to write one script a season I think I've done seven now as, as I say every year we kind of go oh okay we renewed for another year Yay. we're going into season 14 now so and that's been, that's been very interesting actually and it is to a, write a script the Murdoch mysteries they're seen pretty much around the world right I know <laughs> it's <laughs> sort of like the two Canadian exports that we know of, Beachcombers and Murdoch Mysteries, they're, they're <laughs> yeah, everywhere out I there. I know. So it's what's funny. the difference between we, writing for a screen, the stage, and a novel? Obviously, it's three completely different things. Yes. Um, well, the writers, again, there's a team of writers on the show, um, six, sometimes more, and they always really nice but they did let me know that everybody spoke too much in the first couple of uh, of scripts and that I had to trust that just show it we don't have to hear them say it you know and that sounds kind of obvious but it it is different because in in a book for instance I can I have to say really uh, so and so Look, this is a real example. Looked in the mirror, and she was, her skin was marred by smallpox, and she was so ashamed of herself. So I, I have to say all that. Whereas, when I'm writing the script, all I had to say was she looked in the mirror, and as long as the actor knows what she's 
thinking, it shows it. So that's all I have to do. That's right. So I really had to learn that to cut out some of the, the words. And that has helped going that way into a book. Uh, hopefully, it's, you know, you, you can keep keeping the book sharp. But, but I like words. I always have one. I like people to talk a lot. <laughs> so that's, I have to have had to learn that. Still learning that one. So Murdoch and the, and the th- sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just I just say the theater. The similarity, of course, is dialogue and um, show not tell. But they they are different. I was very glad that I had written some plays because the transition from a play to a, a movie is much easier than from a book to a movie, to a show, film. But uh, the theater, what's different? Well, again, it's a bit different now, but you can't do quick changes, for instance, and you you can't get all the technology behind it that you can with a show. So, you know, this is... I laugh when Shakespeare says, one of his characters says, for example, uh, like, oh, there's a storm coming, <laughs> you know, because obviously they couldn't show that. Right. <laughs> and I always love that. Oh, there, it's getting dark. <laughs> <You know? laughs> light to light, it's dark here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, Maureen Jennings is with us. Uh, you know her name from Murdoch Mysteries, uh, Tom Tyler series, lots of other books, 14 in all, three theater plays at least, uh, some television scripts. But what another angle we have here is Bomb Girls. Now, I managed to meet Meg Tilly uh, earlier this spring. Oh. In oh, Bellingham, Washington, yes. at a at a uh, book signing thing, and actually we have her as a guest on an earlier episode of Talking Books. Um, Bomb girl, she was really excited about that too. So, uh, give us maybe a capsule summary and rundown of Bomb Girls, how that all came about. Yes, that was quite amazing, actually, because. Uh, I was on the set of Murdoch one day, and Deb Drennan, who has now become my writing partner, I didn't, we didn't know each other very well at all, but she said to me politely, you know, what are you working on now? And I said, oh, I'm writing a book, which became actually Beware This Boy, set in a munitions factory during World War II. And she... I always say to Deb that I laugh because she got this look on her face of utter astonishment and said that she had had this project for years that she wanted to do based on her grandmother, who had been a bomb girl who had worked in a munitions factory during World War II. So it was a surprise. She hadn't met anybody who hardly even knew what it was. Anyway, so we got together and we hammered out some characters and storylines and then we're able to sell it to back alley producers and they made bomb girls and i was very very happy with that one of the reasons i was very happy was we got to meet in person former bomb girls and they're older now you know they're late 80s or 90s so there weren't a lot of them left and they're all absolutely fabulous i kept saying i'd like to be like you when i grow up because <laughs> they were amazing women just a ama- modest um brave i thought it was fabulous meeting them so i i really like being enjoying being on bomb girls and meg was great and I know she's doing uh, children's books now. Yep. Oh, and uh, then some mystery uh, series. Uh, uh, I can't think of the name off the top of my seat about a cove. So, yeah, she's got at least three of oh, these mystery books out. So about a great. a girl who goes uh, to run a, like an inn, um, a holiday inn kind of vacation spot. And then one thing leads to another and... <laughs> dead bodies start showing up and stuff like that so <laughs> it's yeah, just yeah, great stuff okay. great stuff yeah and uh actually oh, great. i knew 
some people I worked with when I was in radio in Victoria, BC, who actually went to school with uh, Meg and Jennifer Tilly. So, oh, no. Everybody's connected to everybody else. Oh, I know. It's true. And Murdoch oh, Mysteries, they... well, still going strong. You say it's in the 14th season there? We just finished uh, filming season 13. And although we can't say officially there'll be a 14th season, Everybody is saying there'll be a 14th season. So we just keep going, you know. And I'm not even trying to think about it anymore because every time I say, oh, I think this will be our last season, there's another season commissioned. So. <laughs> and it seems quite, I think everyone feels that as long as it feels fresh and people want to do it, that will just keep going. Nobody wants it to get all tired out and dull, you know, and so forth. It hasn't. It's just been amazing, really. Well, I'm amazed. you know, people don't get tired of Sherlock Holmes, so. No, that's true. No, that's true. Never. I never do. Oh, and that, by the way, is another person that I regularly reread, and it always stands up, always. So I think he was an incredible storyteller, Conan Doyle. Oh, excellent. And actually, lately I've rediscovered um, Agatha Christie in audiobooks. Okay, yeah. in audiobooks and they're, uh, I'm finding them very intriguing as well, more so than yeah. I expected. So. Yeah, right. Exactly. She was very skillful, that's for sure. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Although one thing I've noticed is that it's, it's always, uh, he said chuckling, she said <laughs> laughingly, he said cryingly, she said know, uh, angrily, that kind of stuff, which apparently you're yeah. not supposed to do anymore. So I know. It's hard not to, but, yeah, you have to watch that for sure. <laughs> uh, Maureen Jennings she is with us. Cautiously. Yeah, Maureen Jennings, creator of Murdoch Mysteries, Bomb Girls, the Tom Tyler detective series, um... And more and more to come. Um, if they made a movie of your life, who would you want to play oh. yourself? Oh, gosh. I don't know. Honestly, I've never thought like that. I've always thought it was a kind of ordinary life, so I don't know. And, uh, I honestly don't know. You totally stumped me on that one. <laughs> that's okay. I don't know who would play me either, so that's okay. <laughs> No. Actually, I think the only person who would come close would be Ringo Starr. So, uh, all right. Well, he seems good. to be funny yeah. and and yet serious at the same time, and so I don't know somebody oh, like that. I know. Then okay. Yeah. Now you okay? Ke Keely Hawes. Who? She was in the very first Murdoch ah. episode that we did, and she's a really good actress. So uh, yeah, Keely Hawes. Okay. And yeah. she's taller than I am. Oh. That's always nice. <laughs> I always want them to be taller. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> where can we find out more about you? You have a website, I assume? MaureenJennings.com. Uh, and my dear husband posts all the latest things that are happening. If I'm going to give a talk anywhere or what's happening with Murdoch, or, you know. So it's information as well as a bit of history, I guess. Wonderful. Pictures. And Maureen Jennings has been with us today. Uh, Murdoch Mysteries, Tom Tyler, Bomb Girls, Tom Tyler series, Murdoch series, both in uh, print form and on the screen. And her website, www.maureenjennings.com, and it's all uh, common spelling. So, Maureen, we want to thank you very much for being with us today. Oh, it was a great fun, Dennis. Thank you very much. Thank you for visiting with us today. This is Talking Books and Stuff with Dennis Rimmer. Contact him at dennis at talkingbooks.tk. Thank you, and may all the good news be yours. Oh, and don't forget to check out his book, The Great Canadian Notebook, available across Canada and at Amazon.ca. I hope you've been enjoying talking books and stuff. Please support us on Patreon to help cover our costs 
Please click on the Patreon links or you can visit our GoFundMe page. Thank you.